Hello friends, welcome back to this uh, course Water Resources Unit 2nd, Unit 2nd, Diversion Handworks. Myself, Dr. Bhutishan, okay. I'm Professor at Department of Civil Engineering of Indian College, Hanawa. Okay. This is syllabus we are dealing with in this second unit. We are talking about Diversion Handworks. Last time we talked about the typical layout of Diversion Handworks and its various components. In the components, we discussed about gears, the fish ladders, and divide wall, etc. Various components. Major uh, component is uh, the major component of this is uh, a major component of this is gear. We are talking about gear. How to select the various types of gears? Okay. In that type of gears, we discussed about the uh, masonry gear and gravity. Uh, masonry gear, okay. Masonry gears, rock fill gears, and the concrete gears. In that, uh, we discussed up to this last uh, that is very important is this typical section of a barrage, okay. So, we will discuss each uh, one by one every uh, design aspect of this diversion headworks. In that, we are discussing major part that is uh, beer. beer. So in gear there are so many components of this gear. We we'll discuss it one by one and also in detail. Okay. So let's start with this uh, gear. Uh, in gear, uh, afflux and pond level. How to decide the afflux and pond level? You just uh, pause your video and read this uh, uh, article. Uh, so in this article we will discuss what is afflux and how it is affected uh, okay. uh, the rise in maximum flood level upstream of the weir caused due to the concentration of the weir across the river is called afflux okay so rise in the maximum flood level high flood level will increase due to the construction of the weir so the rise how much it is raised is afflux okay in the initial stages of water level is raised on account of afflux up to a small distance equal to the length of the backwater. You know the backwater river as you studied in hydraulic engineering course uh, in gradually very flow. Okay, backwater. Okay, but with the passage of time, the river bed rises due to the silting caused by the reduction in flow velocity upstream of the weir. Okay, Q remains discharge remains the same. And A is increasing and V is decreasing. Okay, so it is uh, river bed. This this uh, rise in water level raised. Okay, occurs. The effect therefore travels upstream till the river bed slope upstream of the weir is the same as was before its construction. Okay, so river tries uh, upstream of the uh, weir tries to settle itself. Okay, uh, we can uh, cons we can understand this phenomena by this article. Okay. Hmm. This topic also covers the uh, uh, unit 5 portion of the effect of uh, uh, gear or water projects on river regimes. Okay, so this is also covered in this article. Okay, before we start with the actual design of the gear, let us first review the effects that are produced by the gear construction on the design of the gear. The first effect produced by the construction of gear was the uh, river is not that the downstream bed of the river goes on eroding, consequently causing progressive lowering of the downstream level. This progressive lowering of the downstream levels is known as retrogression or downstream levels or retrogression. Okay, so now it is clear what is retrogression. The progressive lowering of the downstream levels is known as retrogression. Why it occurs? Because the uh, the silt carried by the water is deposited on the upstream side of the weir so the water has water has carrying capacity some carrying capacity of the silt so it will try to uh, carry the downstream silt so it causes retrogression the basic cause of retrogression is the variation in the silt carrying capacity of the channel as soon a weir is constructed the water starts bonding on its upstream side causing the water surface slope to flatten for some distance behind the weir. This reduces the silt carrying capacity of the river in this reach and consequently the silt deposition starts. Okay, That is the river starts dropping uh, drip, dropping sediment and this leads to formation of shoals and icelands. 
on the upstream side this clear this clear water passes over the uh, over the weir and picks up sediments from the downstream bed so as to fulfill the increased demand of the silt carrying capacity of the channel in the downstream that is sediment deficit caused by the upstream is made up by eroding extra sediment from the downstream this causes the progressive lowering of the downstream bed levels the process continues for a number of years till the river starts again its original flow in the upstream portion by extending the afflux okay we are talking about the afflux okay more and more upstream okay the stage is gradually reached when the upstream pond absorbs no more silt as of as the off tanking channel stacks compared to silt free water the sediment will go downstream while the discharges going down will be below normal and hence the sediment taken shall be more than the carrying capacity of the river consequently resulting in sediment deposition on the downstream river bed and long range recovery of downstream bed levels okay uh, so this you can, you can uh, see this every phenomena in this diagram okay this is the initial flood line before the construction of here okay after this flood line after the construction of here and this is intermediate flood line and this is flood line after many years because of the this deposition of silt this line goes up okay so this is due to afflux okay hence the retrogression of 0.5 meter at high flood stage and higher retrogression varying from 2 up to 2 meter at lower discharge is generally considered in the design of weir for bears okay so just note down this uh, uh, this okay so this uh, we discussed how this afflux is changed it is not only due to the construction of weir but also due to the deposition of silt also now we talk about the pond level what is pond level the water level required in the under sewage pocket upstream of the channel head regulator Canal head regulator, sorry, so as to feed the canal with the full supply is known as pond level. Okay, right? The water level required in the under sewage pocket upstream of the canal head regulator, so as to feed the canal with the full supply is known as pond level. Okay, the full supply level, the vessel of the canal at the head depends upon the level of the irrigated areas and the slope of the canal. Okay, the pond level is generally obtained by adding one. 1.2 meter to the canal full supply level okay since the weir top is raised to the pond level a minimum water level equal to the pond level is always maintained okay you just go through it and you can easily get the uh, how this uh, full supply level or the pond level of the uh, uh, beer or barrage is structured okay so we'll discuss in in detail when we take one example of this okay now let's talk about the under sluices or the scoring sluices Okay. okay, you just go through this paragraph, uh, you can pause your video and you just uh, read this, you will get, you will get the how to design the uh, various levels of under sewage portion and rear portion, okay, it is just very simple uh, design criteria, okay, you just read this, okay, design consideration, this is canal head regulator, this is divide wall, this is your crest level, okay, length of the under sluices, Okay, this is 1.5 times of x length of the, how you decide this length of under solutions. Okay, so these are the uh, how the discharging capacity of under solutions is selected. Okay, I will I will give you the code on this uh, design of this uh, canal regulator. Okay, now next the very important uh, structure that is the divide wall. How to uh, design a divide wall? What is the function of divide wall? The divide wall is a masonry or a concrete wall constructed at right angles to the axis of the weir and separates the weir proper from the under sluices. Okay, what is weir proper? You already seen this uh, in this diagram. Oh, no. uh, not, uh, okay. uh, I I shown you in the division head marks. Okay. Uh, so under sluice, the divide wall extends on the upstream side beyond the beginning of the canal head regulator and the on the downstream side also it extends to the end of loose production of under sluices see like this okay. this is the cross section of divide wall beyond the pakka floor like that up to the pakka floor it is little bit um, like this okay 
So this is the cross section from both this okay typical cross section from the divide wall okay the main functions of divide wall are this okay first it separates the under sluices from the VL proper okay it helps in providing comparatively less turbulent pockets okay it reduces the turbulence okay and this is divide wall keep the cross currents to, uh, to prevent the uh, to are formed and it keeps the away from the VL okay it also rope stop the currents cross currents okay. these are the main functions of uh, this device okay then the design consideration how to how to how what are the considerations you have to uh, consider in designing the device okay now then a river training box okay you are disturbing a river so you have to uh, provide some measures also to train the river so you have to provide this guide banks marginal bonds spurs or grants etc okay to train the river okay then the fish ladder how you what is the purpose of this fish ladder Large jewels contain generally inhabited by several types of fish, okay. Many of which are migratory. Such migratory type of fish are called anadromous fish. Move from one part of the river to the another part of the river according to the season. Okay. In India, only one such migratory fish is found, and this is species known as hilsa. Hilsa, salmon, steel, head trout, etc. Are the other types of such anadromous fishes okay, found in other countries. Okay. In India only hill size there. Okay. So we have to uh, save the hill saw. We have to provide one fish ladder in this. This is the typical cross section of fish ladder type structure. Uh, in this fish can easily uh, go moves from downstream water level uh, from upstream the upstream water level to the downstream water level. Okay. This is the section and plan of the typical uh, fish ladder. This is photographic view of a fish ladder. Okay. Uh, now let's talk about the canal head regulator. Canal head regulator is also part of this diversion headworks. Okay, these are the two key functions of this canal head regulator. It regulates it regulates water supply of canal entering, controls the silt entering canal, prevents river during flood times. Okay, so this is the typical section of a canal head regulator. Okay, an alignment in this. We, how to align this canal head regulator with this curve here okay you just go through it how to design this canal head regulator this is discharge formula for here okay how to decide this okay mm -hmm. right now this is this is one example of this head regulator there are three openings, three meter wide, the water is flowing between the upper and lower gates, the vertical opening. In this question, a flux is also given. How much upper gate, how to decide how uh, uh, how much gate we should open, this we will go explain. Okay. Just simple formula. Uh, calculate the discharge. We just assume X as the unknown in distance and equate the two discharges. Okay. And you can do this okay now today i stop here and next in coming lecture we will talk about the barrage regulation and silt control at headlocks how to control the uh, how to regulate the barrage and how to control the silt in the headlocks okay thank you